Cheetah Strip Club passes into a family trust after owner dies. Um, Bill Haggard, uh, the longtime owner of a storied Atlanta strip club and restaurant, has died. The Cheetah is in a trust left to family members who will continue to operate it, says Haggard's club manager and trust partner Jack Braglia. His plans in his estate were to continue to run the business as long as it's feasible to allow his children to make some money and have income, and eventually, when the time is right, to sell it. Braglia told the Atlanta Journal Constitution. I was like, regular everyone, this first time I did an estate plan, it was in a strip club, not the cheetah, some, some more much, much seedier. So I've like, the cheetah is very nice. It, it, of, <laughs> of all strip clubs, it was very nice uh, from what I hear. because I, I had very good things. But also, the so, good part about this thing is yeah. though, um, is that the trust, because normally with if he didn't have it in a trust, even if he conveyed it by will, the potential cost in issues with probate may have fucked it up so that they had to sell the business to pay legal fees and dispute, settle disputes. The upside of the trust is that it avoided probate. He already had instructions in place, already had a successor trustee, and it was like nothing had happened. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the business wasn't in his name. It was in the name of the trust. The right? the, he probably assigned the business to a trust, it looks like. Gotcha. Right. So the so, trust owns the business, and then when he passes away, it's not a big deal. The business is, now it's part of the trust. Right. Yeah. And now he wants to be like, the income goes to my kids. You have some trustee. Maybe it's one of his kids. Maybe it's a professional trustee or his lawyer. It doesn't really matter. Whoever it is keeps the business going. Does he have to income pay, is divided. Does he have to pay a bunch of taxes on the business? If the trust was good, probably not. Um, and even if the business is worth eleven and a half million dollars, it's not subject to federal state taxation anyway. I if they, I don't know if they own their building or rent it. It sounds like if they're throwing money at it, they, they must own it. It sounds yeah. like they own the land. So yeah. easily between a business and the land, you might be looking at an estate tax issue because that's a real isn't a location that keeps getting more and more expensive. The land itself would probably justify keeping it in trust to. Mm -hmm. to maximize the value of it to the heirs, especially if they are cool with waiting. And I don't know much about the economy of strip clubs, but I assume it generates solid income. <laughs> Since most of, your, so. most of your workers yeah. are contractors, you don't have much overhead. Yeah. You just have to keep the building and the lights on. And maybe with COVID, it, mu it must have, COVID oh, must man. have taken I'm a hit. Sure I don't think <laughs> that uh, the, the people, the attendees of a strip club probably aren't super like careful about like six feet apart. Like, one of the, I, I mean, they're probably pretty excited to be wearing masks. <laughs> one of the, oh God. I, I, that's I, actually I, very that, real. No yeah. Like, thoughts, like, rather not, anyway. No, no, no. no who I am here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. like, if you were, you know, a, a high school age child and you knew your education was being paid for by a strip club, like earnings from a strip club. I'm like, cool. You're cool with that? I mean, like, no I don't know. Is that a little weird? there voluntarily. Yeah, no, right. I mean, All the strippers I know are fairly into it. I mean, it's a, I mean, there's a big stigma attached to it because there's like stereotypes, well, but it, it just so comes here. down from mm -hmm. like, you know, and like, and yeah, like that is real in some situations, but I think for a lot of people, it's super empowering and, and you make really right. good At money. At the Cheetah, I'm so, pretty sure it's empowering. You have to be kind of a badass to like be comfortable with doing that. And then, oh, like, you I have mean, to have a real strong personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, it's yeah. awesome. Also, we were talking about, we were talking about how fun and interesting it would be to interview someone who does own a strip club. So, hey, if you guys know anybody who owns a strip club, let us know because we'd love to bring I'll, on the show. I, I, we will literally talk. go to you. I will sit, we'll set up the cameras and I'll do it in your <laughs> shady office. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. No, what are you doing this <laughs> afternoon? Oh, you know, I have to go to a strip club for work. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't, I don't think that was in my contract. Uh, 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 <laughs> if your business has expensive real estate, you really need to plan it out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Yeah, Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, let us know. Post a comment. Guys, we went to the trouble of creating you a fantastic PDF listed in the description of this video. It is a summary of the key mistakes to avoid when planning for your estate. Um, you can go get that. Steven and James both wrote it together, and it is a summary of all of the mistakes they've seen people make as they think about estate planning. Don't make those mistakes. Your family is the ones that's going to pay for it, and they're not going to like you very much. So that's how you go and avoid them. Click the link in the description. You can get that PDF. It's absolutely free. You're welcome. We're so generous. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you would like us to to plan your estate, give us a call 404-939-7562 or visit us on the web, modernestateplanning.com. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.